welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting of Tuesday, July 25th, 2017. Would you all like to join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to entertain a motion to approve the expense warrant for 630.17 of $27,389.64 and approve the expense warrant for 630.17 for $144. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then I would like to have a, entertain a motion to approve the selectmen's minutes of 411 17 and 720 17. You have that motion? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Announcements Tyler Rowland from the District Aid to Senator Ann Gobi will be holding office hours at the Brookfield Town Hall from Tuesday, from 2 to 3 p.m. Wednesday, July 26th. All are welcome. Does anyone else have any announcements for the evening? Okay, we'll have public access. If anybody says anything to say, they're welcome to come up. I guess no one else wants to talk. I'll talk. <laughs> we got two things, three things. Yet, how come we're not hiring an experienced treasurer? We've had past experience problems. I know you're training somebody, she's a good person. But once again, we've had how many treasurers in this town due to the fact that they have no experience or very little experience? Well, she, we she has- We're falling back into the same thing again. Well, she has 19 years in municipal government. She is being trained by the interim treasurer and she has also worked as the financial clerk for a couple of months for our assistant treasurer and when she worked in another community she worked for um, a department that she handled all of their payroll and their expenses and she's quite we felt that she was quite um, experienced for this position and somebody who had, and we really wanted somebody with municipal experience so we feel that she, she's a very fast learner with every job that she's done up here and she's going to treasurer school um, in August with the rest of them and we feel she's a good choice Linda, you really want me to believe that load of crap? Seriously. It, it's not crap, Dave. Mr. Holcrap. It's not. Mr. Holcrap. Wait a Ms. minute, Mr. Beth. Ms. Chairman. I'm just it's, no, what no. I'm it's, it's not. It's not. I'll tell you. That's it's not. not swear. That is no, not I know. Swear. I, I don't want to hear word. that kind of language, Dave. But the point is, we're telling you the truth. We have oh, we, that, we've checked. We have checked her out. She's very capable. She's worked here for us in the town of Brookfield. She's a very fast learner and she's done very well with any position that she's done. She's an excellent worker. You're missing my whole point again. It takes years to become a treasurer. We've had several problems in this town for years now because we do not have an experienced treasurer. Well, we had- And we do not have one. You, you can say all of what you just said sounds all nice and nice, but back to my thing. We do not have an experienced treasurer on board. It takes years and years yeah, and years. We and the and the tax collect the um, the houses getting the, these tax the, getting the taxes back on these old houses that nothing's been done on that. It keeps getting put in the back burner. It, we were getting things back with our with our deceased treasurer. She was going. She had a lot of things that she was getting off the books, and she had collected a lot of taxes mm -hmm. that were tax title money. And she did a very good job for us. Okay, back to my point again. You have a Madam no, Chairman. Yes. yes. Uh, we have someone who, who does not agree with our decisions. Yep. What I will say is that when we originally rehired, we're attempting to hire, we had a, uh, a, a very capable yes. treasurer that was going to retire mm -hmm. from another town and that she in fact uh, decided that she was going to take the, jo take the job at first mm -hmm. and she was going to be able to afford us 960 hours. With that, it was our decision that we would have an assistant I believe that that would have, in fact, been um, Lon uh, Lonnie. Lonnie. Yeah. And given that Lonnie uh, would have been the assistant, 
that was how that was going to work out. As we've made, a made our decisions today, Lonnie now takes the lead responsibility, but what we also did is we hired an experienced retiree to fill in and be the assistant. So what we have is not only do we have Holly and her background, we have Lonnie and her ex present experience. We have set it up such that she's going to go to training in August, and we have an experienced treasurer, retired treasurer, filling in as the assistant. Mm -hmm. So we have three people with, two of three people having extensive experience, mm -hmm. and I think it sets the town uh, up for improved uh, treasurer experience over a number of years now with what the board has done. So Mr. Holcraft can his, have his position, yeah. we have our position, and I think we need to move on. Okay, well let me tell you, we only have one person who's experienced right now currently. He's only here for three months. It takes years and years. To we said we said if we need him longer than the three mm -hmm. months, we will extend that period. Because we're constantly we're hiring treasures because of the ones we hit are not experienced, and we get into trouble. We constantly hire. How many, we, have you, how many have you fired? How many treasures? I have have, you fired? I haven't been. I know one. Tr we had two experienced treasurers when I was here. And then after I retired, they hired somebody that didn't have any experience, which I did not have anything to do We've with. We've had two treasures in the fire, and the last treasure, we, mm -hmm. she was doing a good job, but she was learning the, the treasurer position as well. But and now she, we're, going, we're going to the same thing again. We still can't get things done in this town. But you cannot find people that have municipal experience, Dave, and you just can't be, bring somebody in from the public sector and expect them to do the jobs because there's quite a bit that involves the municipal experience I mean, to be a treasurer. Eight, eight, nine million dollar budget here. I mean, this, this is serious business. Okay, Mr. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair. Mr. Uh, I yield to okay. Ms. Coughlin. Um, one thing that that probably the, the, the people in, in Brookfield and a lot of other municipalities are finding out is that like skilled manufacturing mm -hmm. positions, Municipal positions that require the level of training that the treasurer does, that the level of training that an assessor does, is becoming one of those critical skill sets mm -hmm. that's very scarce yep. in the state of Massachusetts. Yes. And like corporations right now, towns are having to make the hard decision mm -hmm. of trading their own bench and bringing people in that have the ability to learn it and facilitating it in ways that weren't considered before. I can honestly say I never heard even the thought come from the select board previously mm -hmm. of bringing in somebody with 40 years experience as a consultant to train the new treasurer other times that mm -hmm. they've made the decision yeah. to hire somebody who mm -hmm. wasn't experienced. That's a huge fundamental difference mm -hmm. in process to what has gone mm -hmm. on before. And I think it's important for the townspeople to yeah. understand Yes, they have to. And, and even where our accountant mm -hmm. was concerned uh, when our original accountant had retired and we we hired a new accountant we had an accountant that was well trained she probably had over 35 years or better as a town accountant in other communities and she came in and she trained our town accountant we have now who didn't have the experience and she's do, she is an accountant and she's doing a very good job here for the town of Brookfield Madam Chairman um, we'll debate this all night Okay, so we maybe. have a person that does not agree with us. That's his prerogative. And we have other things right, on our more, agenda. One more, okay. One more thing to the subject. If, if everything is, you're saying everybody works good, good up here and you're working hard, how come the state cut us off for 1.6 million this spring? They didn't cut us off. We got it back. They shut us down, Linda. They shut us down. I was at the DOR meeting. Five people from the state came in because we they had problems. Re they reinstated yeah, our but money. Why did we get cut off? Because five times they notified this town, and not one person in this town hall would respond back. Because to the state. they were sending it to the wrong email, and it was but because they sent it. They thought that Mr. Comtois was chairman of the board, and that's when the first letter came. And he was not the chairman of the board anymore, and I was. And they did not realize that they had a new chairman of the board. And as soon as I got that letter, and um, the town accountant, we had uh, Department of Revenue were down here within probably a week or so. And That's they strange. knew. The DOS said they sent it to different departments, and no one responded. No, I don't remember so them saying why, that. Why was it that well, mean? I don't remember them so saying these, that at these, all. These are the fundamentals and things I'm concerned about for our town. But we're not. We got not, 1.6 back. Yes. We, we we got all of our money back. Yeah, as soon as they knew that we were having problems, 
and they took and, and we had a fix for it from the town accountant. She had all the different steps that were going to take place. They accepted what we were going to do, and uh, we, we got it. all of our money reinstated. And I know I was at the meeting. That's why they're here because we have problems. Five times no one responds, and we get our money. Cut five off. times? I'd like to know who the five what, times were. I'm just telling you what they um, said at the meeting. I don't remember that at all. All right, I get the next thing I want to. Um, you guys were talking about the racetrack, about the permit going to court, the whole nine yards. I'd like to set, set you straight, Linda. You, the, the court is over, okay? Down to Brookfield lost. We lost a ton of money. You have, we have no choice. He can do what he wants down here. He doesn't have to have the permit. He gets the permit, he can do what he wants. This noise decibel, it's over. It's a practice racetrack. He can make his own hours, and he can do his own thing. We lost in court because we didn't want to work with the person. Okay. Last meeting, you were talking about decibels. You're going to go back to court. It's over. We, we have we have another court date that is set, and that's all I'm going to say because I actually shouldn't speak on it because I'm a resident of Quaybog Street who testified when we went to court. Have you checked to see if that's been canceled? No, it has been continued. Okay, but I'm telling you right now, it's a done deal, and we should stop oh. harassing the businesses in this town. Okay, it's a business. <coughs> Let no. them do their thing. If he's That's a business, it. then how come he he's only a practice track? So That's supposedly he's not supposed to be a business. It's a practice track. Yeah. Well, he's, he's doing more than that down there, and I'm not going to discuss. Making... I'm not going to discuss it, Dave, anymore. Well, you you, you mentioned this at the last well, meeting. Well, I can't. I like I just explained to you. You need to recuse yourself. I had to refute, recuse myself and okay. sit on the other I'm side. Saying that he's met all the permits, the EPA. The so, if Mr. Has. Snyder would like to take I, over, I, he can. I think it's important that I do at this point. Okay. So that uh, there is a court date, and what what's going to happen at that court date? Because I've actually talked talked to the owner. He, the uh, the only question that will come out of that is hours of operation. The second thing that I said I said when we talked about decibel readings at the last meeting was yeah. that there are mass general laws that he will and the, the riders have to comply with. The riders, depending on the make of bike and the, and the manufacturer of bike, have a requirement that at 20 inches from the bike that the decibel reading be 96 dBA in one case and it's, I believe 108 in the other case and so that the, it's all for rider safety and protection. So that if Linda were to be reading a number that would equate back to something larger or greater than 96 dBA in one case, 108 on the other case, that that would suggest that the rider is not in compliance with Mass General Law. And so therefore they would have to comply with Mass General Law as far as noise em being emitted from the bike. Yeah, that's all nice, but I'm just telling you what we, we discussed last meeting was about the court date, and that's, it's, it's a done deal. So I think we should just let it, let it be. We didn't, we didn't want to negotiate, and the town lost again, and that's what happens. Madam Chairman, again, we have someone okay. that does not agree with this, okay. the actions of this board, so I would say Absolutely yeah. not. Because yeah. we have other things we have to take up tonight. Moving on. Thank Move. you very much for your time. You're welcome. Okay, moving on, we have uh, Lake Road D discussion. And um, if our assessor, Al Jones, would like to come up, and maybe Herb Chafee would like to come up also, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, you have a copy? I didn't bring mine. I didn't bring mine. Well, maybe you can take stuff that one. We just share. You can yeah, because I brought mine up. Yeah. Maybe you can share. I do have a copy. Yeah, I have a copy. It's in my bag. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> okay, this was brought to us by Mr. Chafee. That's he, Mr. Chafee, because from my understanding, where these properties are out on Lake Road, somebody was putting a, a well in, which we think is town property. And they when said- they originally yeah. had the well state, yeah. it was going to be right on the edge of town property, mm -hmm. that's correct. Then in the meantime, they had engineers and everything else, and they, they moved it to a different location. Mm -hmm. But I, the biggest problem is deeds. Now. The deeds, yes, I know. And this was something, and I know that Al's done a lot of work on this, and this goes yeah, way back to yeah. 2005. And I don't know if they should have correct, been corrected over 12 years ago. I don't think that the deeds, people had bothered to read the deeds to see actually what was going on out there. That's exactly what happened. That's what happened. When the deed, four deeds came through um, with a plan of land, and it doesn't 
doesn't look like anybody really ever investigated to make sure that it was a legitimate um, uh, plan. Uh, it has the uh, the ownership, uh, the bounds of it on the opposite side of the road, which can't be. Can't, can't be. Yeah. Period. Uh, so the actual so in uh, on 92804 when the survey was done uh, by Richard Parra. Carol Land Surveying is still around. It's uh, oh, he's gone. He's deceased. Yeah. No, I think Donald is gone. Okay. Richard, I believe. Okay. Still no, alive. no, Richard, no, Rick. He was up in New Braintree. I think he's yeah. gone because Donald. He, Donald yes. Because he did work for us and he's yeah. passed did work away. For me. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not. I don't know. I know okay. Donald. I didn't know um, Richard. So. Okay. Um, the uh, the planning board approved the Brookfield planning board approved the. Uh, the plan of land that was put in front of them on uh, October 13th of 04. Mm -hmm. um, the plan was registered with the Worcester County Register of Deeds, Registry of Deeds on February 8th, 05. And then 14 deeds oh, yep. covering the four properties came through on March 24th of 05. So, I, in my mind, the, the bounds should be on the same side of Lake Road as the properties. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I believe that was the intent of Mr. Jepson when he commissioned the plan of land to be done. So, uh, in my mind, somebody needs to uh, have this surveyed and have an accurate survey. Whether pa whether contacting Powerland Surveying, if there's anybody there that would help us, I don't know. Uh, the fact that we signed off on it, I don't know where that leaves us legally going way back. The other question I have is um, Lane 24. Is that still considered a town road? Is it a private right of way? Because there's no mention of that in the new deeds. Be, uh, my understanding, I don't know if Herb could correct me, when we started out originally years ago with the 9-11, we made all those lanes so that, you know, if there was emergency calls, people knew where to go. Yeah. But are they considered private roads or are the, they considered- uh, 24. I'm not sure if it got done or not here yep. through the town, mm -hmm. but I know it's uh, some lawyer had come across to have that turned back over to the mm -hmm. residents. Whether or not that got done legally or not, I don't know. Good. What, what about right now, it's a pro it, to me, it's a private road. It's a private road. It was the original Lake Road, right? And yep. when they straightened it yes. out. Mm -hmm. Th this piece was left. Yes, I understand. Left yeah, it I know where it's been like that for years. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I don't know, probably when the 60s or 70s or something. Way back. Yeah. Way back. I, I mean, remember that. And that was still that, all yeah. town property it at was, one time. Yeah, because yeah, it was Basically like a back. little grass strip that's out there. Right. And the grass strip was town property. Yeah, and it's the grass strip that now is one well and one or two septics on? Uh, two septics. Mm. Which are, you know, that they went through all the permitting process. I mean, there was nobody did anything illegal there that I'm aware of. But that land is theirs, and the question is, did, does the septic actually, the, the, do the pipes run under lane 24, which is a town road, or is it not a town road? Has it been abandoned? I couldn't find anything where it indicated that we had ever abandoned it. But you would know should, it should be something in either a selectman's office or a town meeting. I'm. How far we just say we'll go back? I'm trying to think when we first started. I'm saying on. probably about 10 years ago, eight to 10 years ago at least. So if we alerted the landowners that we have a conflict, we we probably should alert them that we do have probably, a conflict. It's probably time. Yeah. That's a potential conflict. I don't know. Yeah. Potential control, conflict, and and then. The next action would be para to see if para, anyone in the para organization exists today. Well, according, according to the deeds that have been done at the, at, mm -hmm. in Worcester there, I took the measurements from the deeds yep. that are existing now mm -hmm. for it, and it does go from the pond, the pond side all the way across Lake Road to the other bound that's over there. Yeah, and, I'm, and I'm the only reason. And that's the new deeds. And, and what I'm saying, Herb, is was there anything in the, in the case of Para that they did that prompted them to go to the other side of Lake Road? You know, just as know. research. At yeah. the time, it was all Jepson, I believe, or Jepson 
had owned that land. Yeah. He may have already yeah. sold it to. He, he sold, sold it. He sold it to the town of Brookfield when they straightened the road out yeah. back. Right, but right the other side. Yeah. Outside, the other side of the road on the other side of Lake oh, Road. One that, point, Jepson owned that. Jepson owned it, and, and then it went to full of cat, full of Cadillac, and, and then he sold it to the. Um, but I get a feeling that Jep, Mr. Jepson, his, he said, I owned over here. Now I don't own that. The rest of it, I want to go to those people. Mm -hmm. And it was never thought right. that, okay, the rest yeah. of that means that the pin should actually be on the other side of the road. Yeah. Should that would be my guess as to what happened. So I we'd have to do some kind of research to find out actually what Mr. Jepson's intentions were. Now, well, at the it, time, is the historic deeds available at all? Going way back? Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of things in yeah, the fall going way back. But there's, um, the, well, the deed, there's a deed in the packet that I gave you. And that um, gives power of attorney to Warner Fletcher yeah. for Mr. Jepson, yeah. and that lists a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I didn't want to go too deep into it because I'm not sure where we go. This was a first, just the first pass. So did the town sell the property to these owners? Which property? Ba back no. to this. No, no I think I know. Oh, right, I'm just, the Jepson, if I get this straight, is that the Jepsons own to the to the pond? Correct. They own, yeah. Well, they own to the. They did own the pond at yeah, one time because one. we used to call it Jepsons Beach yep. right. years and, ago. Uh, but they, these lots were here; they were pre-existing. Mm -hmm. And then he just they just extended the lot lines across yeah. to Lake Road. Okay. So that was those individuals extended to Lake the, the other side. Mm -hmm. So. I think we, we need to notify those property owners, the current property owners of those lots. Mm -hmm. that, I can give Karen that information. Yeah, yeah. That, that in fact, this map is now showing that you're to the other mm -hmm. side of Lake Road, yeah. which can't be because the town owns the road. Yep. And so therefore, there needs to be a correction made. And at, the, at this point, we need to be in agreement between the landowners and ourselves as to how to proceed with this. And there may yeah. be two ways to proceed with it, as I understand it, Madam Chair. One of them mm -hmm. would be that, the, that, in essence, the land ended at the Lake Road, yeah. um, what do you call it, uh, right away. Yeah. Okay. Like and right that the strip on the area. other side naturally belongs to that other landowner that's that's now yeah. on the other side of the road. It just goes right to the, to the outside of the road. It just yeah. goes to the outside of the road. Right, yeah, there's nothing like, but water on the other be, side. It's almost like a horseshoe this drive would be out town. Thing. Right. Yeah. It goes right to the edge of the town, what I would consider the, the town. The town, right, right, the town's right, right away. away. Okay. Yeah. It does not include, the, uh, it, it, which is now the state on the other state side. State on the other side. Does not okay. include that. So it, it could be that the, you know, the land boundary ought to end it right away, or it could just be that there ought to be a granting of a, of a, uh, easement to the town through that property. I mean, it could it could go either way in essence. I, I don't know. Uh, you don't want an easement. No, I don't no, think we want an easement. They don't belong there. across there. No, I can't picture right. another spot in town where there's no. a public road. It has an easement. My knowledge is where there's a deed that says. Okay. The, so all private the private person owns okay. the road. So we just have to have Karen, I think, get in touch with the owners that are involved with this and tell them there's a property, there's a problem with the deeds, and maybe we should see if we can contact and see if there is anybody around with the parallel land surveying, surveying yeah, company. The, the lawyer that did all the deeds is no longer uh, practicing law. Well, yeah, because I know he's he's up there in age with the Jepsons. <laughs> He's with me, so I don't know if we're that far. Right? Oh, no, I thought he was. No, I, no, I thought he no, was. You're talking old. Warner Fletcher. Yes, that's Ed what I'm Ed Neal did 14. Oh, Ed Neal. Yeah, I know. Ed Neal was the one. And didn't he do this with another firm out of Southbridge, if I read right in yes. some of these? Yeah. yeah. And he lived in one of the four houses yeah. at the time. Yeah, because he lived right there. next door. Yeah, I know where he lived. From an assessment standpoint, I've adjusted it so that the adjustment reads that, it, um, that the actual acreage of the lots is only to one side of Lake Road. Yeah. They are not paying taxes, mm -hmm. uh, nor have they ever no. for a crop for the uh, for the actual Lake Road. So, so we right haven't been, we have not been charging them for no. for that. We had not been charging okay. for any of this. Okay. Yeah. We had never added yeah. it from an assessing. We didn't know any of this until Herb came up with it. And brought no, it. no, it went through. I mean, oh yes, I knew that it, it went through, but it actually wasn't read back there in 205. So for 12 years, it's kind of been nobody knew anything about it. Uh, Jim, 
uh, respond to this? He was my attorney. He, from what he told me, I helped him get the house when he bought it and all that stuff. But he told me he got the land, that piece you're talking between Race Corner Road and the actual Lake Road, mm -hmm. which the old piece. He told me that, that all the owners own the whole road and that piece. That's how they did. And that's why they were able to put the septic system where it is now. Because they took it. He we're told me they he got it back from the it's state or something and now they Well I don't know how they got it back from the state because it was I'm just telling you what he told me. And that road no. that you've been plowing there, that is now owned by those four people. So Well if you're following well, the he said she said thing did. Well, yeah, that's just, what it I'm is. Just, just none of the deeds none of the unfortunately deeds none of the deeds specify that. They should yeah. have it. If mm -hmm. that's the case then if you live next door to me and we're both on this private right away that I should have in my deed that I can go across yours and vice versa. Right. And nothing was I'm ever written. Yeah. Uh, no, yep. there, but Appreciate there's that. nothing like the, like uh, Al says, there's nothing in the deeds that says that. Yeah. I would check with him and his wife and then that might help you out a little bit. Okay, so, so what would to be the steps to reconcile this? First, we well, just contact the we, property owners. Yeah, we should contact the property owners, and then we should also see if there's anybody that's still doing work at Para Surveyors, yep. which I don't, I don't even know if anybody is and, anymore. And get them to redraft the site plan. Yeah. In essence, and re refile yeah. with the registry of deeds. Is that and what the yeah. steps? Would be? But if if everyone if everyone is was in agreement about about where those property lines truly should be, let's say that all of the property owners were like. Yeah, we, we just are, we're supposed to get up to the road. If okay. the intent, if they all agree that the original if, intent if was. If everybody agrees that the original intent was take it to the road, mm -hmm. okay, what would the next step be just to get a In new site plan? I would have an, an accurate plan of land for those four, four, lot, uh, four lots mm -hmm. created, yep. approved by planning board, because it's now a different planning. Mm -hmm. And then it would, and, and, and if everybody at that point is in agreement, then it would become a registered. Yeah. It would get registered. Yeah, registered. The other question that came to mind is, is there anything on the deeds that needs to be added to allow this? Because if they have run septics underneath, uh, we also Private need to road. find out whether or not that the town ever abandoned that road. Okay. Because if they did, like Old Rice Corner Road, Old Rice Corner Crossroad was a part of the same, yes. that was mm -hmm. part of the road that was yep. straightened out. That is still, that was never abandoned. That's a public road. Yeah. And this is just another piece of it, so I... In the other section of Lake Road that's over there, it's, it's still part of town. Yeah. So that's something I know would probably have to be researched in the old town meeting records, too, because you have to vote on all of this when you abandon a road at a town meeting. So oh. there's a lot of research that would have to go along with this. I would imagine. And if you can't find that, I don't, you know, then you'd have to figure out Maybe it you never happened. do that now. Yeah. Yeah, we may have to take it to well, town. I'm trying to think if there was a list of abandoned properties. I just want to say, I just looked up on my phone, and it says Para Land Survey in Southbridge. It's run by Richard Para now. And that's who did this. Richard. Oh, so there is, so they are still there, right, Richard? Okay, all right. Well, we should probably contact him. 349 Ashland Avenue, Southbridge, Massachusetts. Yep. The call you need to make, Al. Yeah, Al. If you'll do the call. If you are not going to listen to me. <laughs> no, we need a higher authority. That's why we come to you. Yep. <laughs> well, I think well, that he can give you the homeowner's number, yeah. but I think you're the ones that should, you're the yeah. one that should call Parrot. I have yeah. no jurisdiction. Well, I have well, nothing. I, we have absolutely no knowledge. We don't but have the board of selectmen, in my mind, this falls for the board of selectmen. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, but, Karen. But, but I think. I'm more than willing to sit yeah. there. I'll go over. I'll, I'll sit with you on we the can, conference. We can probably call. do a conference. But Karen really and myself and you, we should do I'm a conference. I'm going to give you any response. You or me make any decisions on this one. No, no. I. That's what we're saying. We should probably do a conference call with Mr. Para, then we'll get in touch with him over this. So we'll make arrangements maybe within the next week or before we come back for the next meeting, we'll, we'll get some kind of an answer on what we're going to do. Sure, I can talk to Karen tomorrow. We can set okay. up a time. Maybe that we'll get something good. tomorrow going, but yeah. okay. I really don't feel comfortable. No. Oh, I understand that. No, it should come from, if you'll sit in, because you do know more about this than all of us, because you've researched it. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. I think you've done a lot. A lot, <laughs> lot out. Well, okay. if I do it versus um, our legal attorneys, yeah. then 
Yeah, you oh, probably, you you probably yeah. saved us about five thousand dollars already, <laughs> Al. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions with that? <clears throat> no, I don't think so. I can't think of anything at the moment. Okay. So we'll Karen, I'll get you the info tomorrow as far as the four homeowners that are it's actually two of the parcels are owned by the same group, so it's really only three. three. And um, I can give you that there. Uh, I'll get you what they're we have for their billing address for tax purposes. All right, you need to write a synopsis of what it's, you know, what you said tonight, just something I can put in the letter. Oh. Okay. You're going to say it. Okay, you want to You're just ghostwriting now. you want to stay up and you can, yeah. we'll talk about. You want to jump to um, no. number five? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, why don't we have, while well, Al's here, and Herb can say, we're, we're going to just jump up to number five, because Al is here, it's to sign the CAMA yeah, contract. Okay, let's get that one. So this one has to do with the, um, the camera. Do you have it? Do you have the contract? I have the contract oh, okay. right here. All I'm right. just going to explain it quick if you okay. want to. Okay, sure. Um, camera is the software that we use to uh, assess land, uh, commercial, residential, open, and now all the buildings in town. Mm -hmm. We've been using a state system for a long time. About six months ago, Marlene came before you and the decision was made to go with the state. Yeah. Um, I was doubting Thomas, I'm the first one to admit it, and I've spent a lot of time with other vendors, um, as well as the state IT folks, and they finally convinced me last week, and they've come a long way, um, that I think financially it's the best solution. Software-wise, it's probably not the best, but I think I couldn't in my mind way where spending that much more for software would help us out. Um, the, the value's not there. Yeah, no, no reporting capabilities now, so if somebody asks for something, it takes two, three hours sometimes to create something that they have a can report on. So it, it makes sense to me to go forward with what Mylene had presented yeah. way back okay. when. Um, there's trainings included, uh, mappings included, everything is, appears, and there's some customization initially, uh, they were talking just, they were, it was targeted towards large towns, um, and I raised that question, and they now have, uh, uh, it's not Conway, maybe Conway, one of the smaller towns, so that as, uh, as a beta, there's somebody like us, it's not just yeah. targeted towards beta. How many towns have actually signed on with this? 47, 44, 47, somewhere in the 40. Yeah. We need 40 with the magic number. Um, some of our neighbors have gone with us, some are not. Have the other Brookfields, have they gone along with us? East is going to a company called Vision, okay. um, which I'm very familiar with in my past, yeah. but uh, the cost would have been fairly prohibitive. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a 10-year agreement. The first seven years are set, and they won't raise the uh, price. Right now we're paying $37.75, the price goes up to $38.05 for the next seven years. Okay. That's so not, that's I, there's nice. probably going to be some other class associated, with, but there are some mm -hmm. out there with that. And then after that, it goes up by the last three years, uh, uh, either their standard raise or cost of living, uh, uh, CPI plus 3%. Mm -hmm. And so then it, after that, 10 years out, we make a decision that we want to stay with it. Okay. Um, so I think it's, there's really nothing we can change in the contract. It's either we say yes or, they, or we say, we're not interested, we're going to go find another solution. Yeah. Um, so I'm not trying to jam anything down. No, but if really you feel that this is the best solution right now, the problem. It seems to me, yeah. Okay. So are you beyond for signing it? Whether you okay. want to sign yeah. it now? Yeah. Or uh, yeah. Motion to sign the yeah. CAM contract. Yeah. Second. Um, there's two yes, um, there's a yes here that agrees that the Mass IT uh, will work collaboratively with us, and I said yes to that, and there's another yes section where it'll allow Tyler Technologies, which is the company uh, doing this, as well as Mass IT, to have access to our data. Okay. Seems pretty sure. standard. It is. And then other than that... Show me what's going to be signed. Okay. Yeah. You do right to sign it, title, and date it. And I will get a copy we're of this in, to you, uh, Karen. All we have no to discussion? do is say, uh, I think okay. it's just you because it's just the... Yeah, uh, yeah, but we have to get it from the board. Yeah, you have a motion. Have a motion. You have a second. Oh, okay. okay, all in favor? All right. right.
Okay, there you go. You're Beautiful. Well done. Thanks, so. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, Herb, we'll have you back up here with our Chapter 90 request. We have a um, Chapter 90 request here from um, the highway superintendent to lease a dresser loader and to use uh, Chapter 90 money. Are we not going to lease it now? We're going to do a lease purchase. A lease purchase, okay. Yes. On a loan. Lease to, lease to. Not a dresser. Oh, she, she had it right here, dresser loader. Well, That's the replacement. Oh, this is the replacement. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, this is to request for a three-year lease purchase on a 2017 544K John Deere loader. And, uh, and the estimated cost of it is $183,948 and the annual amount each year would be $6,316 and this would come from Chapter 90 money. That's correct. So you have a motion to okay. proceed. Okay, do you want to discuss anything? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll second it for discussion. Yeah. Okay, is there any discussion on this? Yeah. Yeah, we'll just get a motion. Yeah, I, I, I second it specifically okay, for discussion. I second it for discussion. Okay, oh, Mr. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Okay, yeah. Mr. Eaton, do you, uh, what's your question? Uh, just that the CIPC hasn't reviewed this and we are having a special meeting on Tuesday at 11 o'clock to review this specific request. Okay, well, I know the town accountant's already signed off on it, mm -hmm. and I'll probably sign off on it tonight. You want us to say, do you want me to sign off on this tonight, or do you, you want... If you guys agree to it, that's fine, yeah. and I'll still meet with them on yeah. Tuesday, that's okay. all. Okay, all right. Do discuss it. Okay, all in favor of uh, signing. Yeah. Do you have well, any more questions, Bill? Mr. Chair, you know, uh, the select board supported the CIPC. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, intuitively, I think it's probably the right decision. Mm -hmm. But I, I really think that we need to have uh, a review by CIPC of this project. This but the money is, it is coming, though, from Chapter 90 money. It's not money that we actually have to appropriate for this. So, uh, so, so, so Madam Chair, the, the challenge is, and, it's, and, and I can kind of fall on it either side of this discussion, in that initially my, my, my gut instinct said we placed the replacement of the dresser loader in the original capital plan back in, in, in 2013 for I believe it was fiscal year either 15 or 16. 2015. Uh, yeah. It's 15 would be the fiscal year 16, right. but it's, yeah. it's, it's in, that, in that general vicinity. Okay, we, we chose not to do it. Um, I, I, if I recall properly, there were some other more critical projects going on that, that took the Chapter 90 money at the time. Mm -hmm. The superintendent made a, a very appropriate choice in funding those activities first. Um, in, in nothing, nothing against the board that's out there yeah. and everything else. But there's been boards out there before that this stuff, all the paperwork's gone to with, you know, paperwork to go down the line for this, 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 and nothing has ever happened. There's been three vehicles that have been replaced down there, and that board has nothing to do with it, had nothing to do with it at the time because it wasn't active enough to take it. Now, now to, now to, now to Mr. Mr. Eaton's point, Madam Chair, I think mm -hmm. what he's, he's asking for is that since we're in the process of reconciling our town finances, mm -hmm. we're in the process of standardizing our financial policies and procedure books, we've got to start somewhere in a, at least walking the paperwork well, through the, the appropriate procedures, okay? okay? okay. And um, I, I think we don't want to disrespect the folks that are on the CIPC by necessarily no. saying we're absolutely going to do this well, regardless of what you say. Uh, 
you know, well, it could get perceived that way. If we go ahead and just approve it and say, hey, we're going to do this, and this is your courtesy copy, CIPC, without them giving any type of input, it, then, it, it then could. I'm in, then I'm, I'm not going to say the violation right now of the, that committee, because we've, we've already approved two projects and stuff in town with Chapter 90 money to move forward on capital improvement. Right. That are and things that, that probably normally ought to route through there. And, and it's something, but we've got to... It, but roads in Chapel 90 has... The only people that have control of that is the Board of Selectmen, Highway Department, and the, the Mass DOT. And the Town Accountant also. Well, the Town Accountant has to sign off on right. it. Right. Madam Chair, we don't make the decision on it. We just analyze it, review it, and make a recommendation. The decision still is with Herb and the select board. Mm -hmm. We don't have any authority to decide on it. We just, part of our responsibility as CIPC is to analyze and to vet these projects and to assist the advisory committee mm -hmm. and the selectmen in helping them make the decision. That's what our role is. Oh, I, I so understand we don't, that. We, you know, we don't have the authority, you do, but we just would like the, uh, Responsible. We were given the responsibility. We would like to take the responsibility of reviewing, and we're talking about Tuesday to do it. And we're, we're having a special meeting. I hope Mr. Well, Chaffee can. We just we just appropriated two hundred and thirty thousand dollars to do that bridge project down here in the past week. The CIPC is yeah, you know, yeah. The CIPC is had just nothing to do with that. Well, I know we just been formulated just recently that CIPC has been formulated. Mm -hmm. so. I, go ahead. Okay, okay, Mr. Snyder. Where, where it is Tuesday, given the opportunity to go through what the plan was, because at our last yeah. meet, at the last selectmen's meeting, we had a well, actually the last two selectmen's meetings, we went through a review of the ideas of Chapter 90 money and where things were going to be the priority list. So we've we've done that as as far as. This, this body has, has talked about what our direction was, and this was included in that plan. Again, Herb, between now and next Tuesday, is there anything that's going to change? No. So, so no, what, what I would do is I would motion to table the, the, the motion for tonight to the next Board of Selectmen's meeting. Given the Tuesday meeting, it would be a week from Tuesday that we would come back together to sign that document. I think it... Does it have... Do you want it signed any sooner than our... No, next? that's... You can do it. Okay, so we can so, wait until we meet again in two weeks. But, but I, okay. time certain, we're going to have this in front of us mm -hmm. two weeks today, uh, given uh, that the meeting takes takes place next Tuesday, and we go through those priorities because you could, you provided an excellent list of priorities and rationale for the priorities. Well, and, there's a lot of priorities out in the town of Brookfield that needs to be addressed a lot quicker than. Yeah. All the things. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I think it, 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 mm -hmm. to support the CIPC, I think it's it's a win-win <coughs> to be able to do that. Okay. So we'll we'll. Um, I'd Just like to take hold it until next time. Sure. Around. Okay. Until two. We, we talk can talk to the, whoever's the chairperson from the committee. We'll go from there. Okay. Well, I'd right. like to take a vote to um, a motion to, ta motion to, ta to table I, this. Table this to a time certain. Until two weeks to, after two, the then. CIP committee goes over this. Yep, but, and again, it's going to be an education process mm -hmm. for them because, again, Herb and the Highway Department has put together a list of priorities, rationale for those priorities, mm -hmm. this being right on the next the, the next peg on the list. Yep. So I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, next on. Next on. Oh. I don't know. Peter, do you know if Donna was going to come up and talk? Donna was supposed to come up Peter and talk to us. Peter was going to come You are going to come and talk to us? Okay. Yeah, Peter, Peter has. Oh, Peter uh, has. Uh, or okay. Donna has family. Thanks for that. Oh, okay. So, Peter, you have to come up. You are next on the agenda. Where's my agenda? Can I show you the agenda? Oh, she's absolutely. I don't even know. Yeah, thank you, Karen. It should be attached to the cover. No, I took it off. I don't know what I did with it. <clears throat> okay. Um, Chief uh, LaFleur was in last Thursday after we had adjourned from the meeting, and she came in to talk to me about a lot of ambulance calls that have been going down at the racetrack, and she didn't know if we were aware of them, and she wanted to come in and talk to us about it. Oh, wow. She's 
You just said that you were just looking for more information as to how many calls we've done that down, yeah. down there. Yeah. And we look back three years and we've done ten. ten. Or we've done nine and you still feel they won. Okay. So ten calls in three years. But she had also said too that a lot of these people actually aren't even um, Brookfield people that you've been oh, treating. I don't think we've transported a Brookfield resident. No, she said they've come out even as far as from New Jersey that they're coming down and she also thinks that there's a lot that we don't know about because if I remember right, Karen, did she say, say that she thinks that they've been transporting them in their own I vehicles? In some cases, we in some vehicle. that, but we can't. Yeah. Because in those cases, even the 911 system wasn't that activated to the police or law enforcement wasn't that yeah. aware of it. Well, we've just heard that in passing from other patients that, or from patients that, well, you know, so and so last week, mm -hmm. he got banged up and he went to the hospital for the moment. There have been 10 annual transports from the north. Yeah. So, yeah, going back to those. Okay, we, do we have, I know um, we do have a few people here tonight, you know, that are neighbors down there with the racetrack, and I don't know if they want to bring up anything about this this evening. Well, Mrs. Robidoux? Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Megan Robidoux. I live actually right down on Route 9, 45 South Maple Street, and I actually just wanted to come by because um, really just to voice our opinion about how much the racetrack has affected our personal life. Yeah. Um, it's really been tremendous over the, especially over the past year and a half, how much the noise has really affected us personally. Um, we actually, when we bought our house, we actually, uh, we know we're right on Route 9 and we really live off the back of our house and it's gotten to the point where we actually really cannot enjoy our backyard at all anymore. Uh, when the racetrack is operating, we actually have a, a large deck off the back of our house my family comes over quite often we actually do all of our holiday parties and um, birthday parties at my house and we cannot even be outside anymore during that time it's gotten that bad and if we do we actually it's to the point where we actually have to raise our voices to talk to each other okay. it's extremely annoying it's just it's it's not enjoyable at all um and actually, we actually have to keep the windows closed too. We can't even get fresh air. So um, it's just, it's really changed a lot and we can't enjoy our house anymore. Um, so, you know, I'm really just asking the town to consider whether or not the practice track is the best fit for the town at this time. You know, I'm not a person to ever stand in the way of a small business I, or people having fun for, for that matter at all. But, you know, clearly I feel like from the beginning with the practice track, I feel like we were a little bit misled about how many mm -hmm. people would be there at the track and how busy it would be um, and how loud it would be. Um, I, secondly, I feel like if that's not an option, I don't know, I'm not a professional as far as the bylaws of the town, but I would propose a, a noise ordinance of some sort um, because I just feel like there's no time for us to ever even enjoy our backyard anymore. Um, and uh, if it's not only time restriction, but uh, the hours of operation, engine size, whether or not there's silencers on the pipes or, you know, again, I'm not the professional in that type of thing. I'm sure that uh, there's the right people to make those decisions. Um, and also, what are the registration requirements and re registration regulation requirements for um, a business of, to that extent? Um, I'm sure, like a business, that must be the oversight must be extremely stringent. And I would just encourage the, the town themselves, who is really monitoring, uh, are the are the vehicles themselves registered? I know out of state vehicles, if, if they're registered out of state, they it doesn't count in Massachusetts, is anybody watching that, age restrictions, um, helmets, safety equipment. Uh, I'm just wondering about the oversight on the property oversight. themselves. Uh, so, you know, just overall, what's going on down there is my, my question. Well, I'll let Mr. Snyder speak because I'm a, I'm a resident down that area too and I have objections to the crowd. 
to the uh, so, and, and so I think it's important that who has jurisdiction. As you heard earlier, the town, in fact, did take the track to court. And with that, there will be a judgment uh, as to hours of operation, that there will be agreements to hours of operation because it was unclear with the judgment that took place whether or not there was an understanding of hours of operation. What I've understood from Mr. Plume uh, is that he, in fact, the earlier negotiate, quote unquote, unnegotiated hours was, in fact, the hours that he was going to conduct. So I think at the, at, at the court date, uh, and again, I can't remember the date, that the, there will be a confirmation of hours of operation. So at least you'll have that firm as to what, when he can and cannot operate. Is that something that is negotiable, that is being talked about? What it was talk, it, it, it was, there was an attempt at negotiation, that attempt at no negotiation failed. Given that negotiation, there were about nine items on that letter of, of points of dispute. <coughs> One of the areas of dispute was hours of operation, and he, in fact, has said that what was on that original negotiation was, in fact, going to be his hours of operation. So I think the 20, whatever this court date, when it does take place, there will be a confirmation of the, the actual hours of operation. So that, that's the first piece of understanding and having a clearer understanding as to hours of operation. Second piece to this is that the environmental police have then jurisdiction on the idea of registration. From what I understand, they have in fact gone down there and there have been those that have been uh, noted as not in, in compliance with their registrations and therefore they could not race. And the other piece of it is that the town in fact did purchase a decibel meter. And what I would do is encourage the use of that decibel meter uh, a sharing of that decibel meter so that you understand what the noise levels are at your home because we can go onto Google Maps pretty darn quick and we can look at the the distance between your home and the racetrack and what what I spoke of earlier is that the bikes again it's mass general law it's uh, uh, the responsibility of mass environmental uh, uh, environmental police to, to um, take responsibility for it but there are two noise levels that are allowed on that kind of vehicle one is 96 and the other is I believe 108 and that is at 20 inches from the bike so if they have messed around with the exhaust system or anything like that and many of these bikers do do that and that's what causes the noise reading to go from 96 of something to something greater than that and what you can then do is you can go on, uh, th there's programs online that you can say, I measured this at this distance, and it's supposed to be this at this distance, and you can actually interpolate to determine whether or not a bike has been taken out of compliance, that the muffling system has been re replaced or re removed. And again, at that point, you can then turn to the environmental police and to say to act, that they in fact are not in compliance and that they need to, that the uh, actual bike owner has the responsibility. Now, Mr. Plum has also said that he is monitoring noise. Given your report tonight, it's suggest suggesting to me that it's not being measured. I, yeah, it's been something that, you know, we really have tried to put up with. We're, we're not trying to be difficult. And as a matter of fact, from the beginning, we felt like maybe we didn't want to stand in the way of anything, anybody a good time, to be honest with you, or try to be difficult. But the bottom line is, it's really just played, a, it's been a real problem in our life. Mm. Uh, you know, my son had a birthday party, and we had people at the house. It was obnoxious. Easter, Sunday. We couldn't even be outside. It was bad. That was the, the line. Yeah. Outside of East Avon. Can't even talk to a person next to you. Yeah. And again, that would suggest, I mean, a, yeah, a rural country road is 40 dBA. A, a busy road like Route 9, you might get up to 80. So if you were measuring something beyond those numbers, then there's something wrong with the muffling system. Mm -hmm. You know, something as simple, you know, this might be something little to other people, but, you know, we used to have all kinds of birds in our backyard, and they're gone. They're, they're not there anymore. So it's just, you know. yep. How you doing? My name is Rob Canyon. I've lived in Brookfield, I think, for 18, 20 years. This is my first ever coming to a town hall for exactly that reason. I've watched within the start of this all gone up. My life, you know, 
exactly what they said to where the family parties that we've had, we can no longer have them outside. If you look, I live on 11 Boys Avenue, and it's predominantly west wind, and I walk, if any day with a little bit of breeze coming from the west wind, it's, I can hear, I can tell you what, almost, and I'm not a rider, I respect the riders, but it's, it's gotten to the point where we cannot enjoy a swimming pool that we don't use anymore, because just, when you go there, you're, you're finding yourself talking louder so you can be heard, and, you know, we talk about the sound, now's the best time, and we're hearing it bad, but we got leaves on the trees. Once that, those trees start falling, you know, and it was with the caterpillars helping, you know, bringing, it's being extreme level. When you talk anywhere after September and those leaves start falling, that noise almost, I would say, 30 to 40 percent increases. So even if they measure it, I would challenge what time of year are they measuring it? Because I'll tell you right now, when they're doing it before the snowfall, because the riders do even do in the fall, and I'm sure you see the same thing, it's even louder. Leaves would attenuate the sound. Yeah. Absolutely. And so it's, it, again, what you've measured to where it was and to understand what that delta difference is. You, you, again, I would implore you to get data. Uh, and again, the gentleman in the back row there has a noise meter that, that uh, he's nodding his head. Gary is nodding his head there. He has a noise meter. I would implore you to take advantage of that noise meter so that we can actually have data so that you can actually go towards the environmental police to say enforcement. Uh, and just the question about the noise ordinance. Is there a noise ordinance in town? No, 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 no. it's mass, the noise the noise levels that I'm talking about are mass general law. <coughs> so would the town consider um, raising a noise ordinance that would then override what the state laws then say? I and mean, can't we as a town say that this has become a disruption? If there's so many people that are, it's 25 votes of a special. Mm -hmm. Can't we lower what the for, decibel? For special, no, for a special. Right. A special is 10 percent of the vote. Okay, but yeah. 25 yeah. at the annual. Well, 20. 10, 10, 10. At the annual. Okay, just couldn't been correct. Yeah. 10 uh, special, we will have 10 a special town meeting in the fall. If you were to bring a Warren article forward, which would be a, a noise ordinance suggestion on the part of the public, you'd need 10% of the pop voters to sign on to that if it were to be brought forth at a special town meeting. If you were to bring it at, to the annual meeting next spring, that only would require 10, 10. voters to bring that no, no, what you are suggesting as a noise or ordinance forward to the town. I don't know if I should address. Was they have to abide by that ordinance if that happened, or would they be grandfathered? We'd have to work with the lawyers for yeah, sure. Yeah, we have to. I mean, yeah, he's got a business. So I do have a question regarding yeah, the original. It was supposed to be a business. I thought it was supposed to be practice. <laughs> he's calling himself a business. Right. He says that his lawyer says that he is a business, that he's, that he's uh, provided the proper paperwork for being a business. That's the last that I knew from him, that he has the correct permits. Originally when that premises was permit, permitted uh, for any type of this activity, wasn't a, a sound barrier of some port, point one of the conditions of that permit? I think that that fell no. I, I'm mute because I'm still over here, Beth. I'll talk because I okay. Yeah, that's better to recuse. Right. Okay. <laughs> that. No, but, you know what they put up there? There really weren't sound barriers. What he? There were only six feet tall, no. and Miss and they Taylor, were, Taylor had gone down, and he looked at them. Right. All right. The, those were erosion barriers well, that were erosion put up. Barriers. So, so that's what those were. As a part of the negotiation, a lack of negotiation, the idea of noise barriers was were not approved or, or not not part of the deal, and so therefore he does not have strictly what would be termed noise barriers. So what would it take to get that? You'd have to turn to the zoning folks. But right now he's got a quote unquote compliant business, has certain permits that he has, and the only uh, recourse that we have is in fact noise, and that is uh, adjudicated by the environmental police. Now, is this a register? Does he have this registered with the town clerk? His business? 
that's what I understood in my last communication with him that his lawyer is saying that he's correctly permitted. Now, um, I don't know, does anybody else have anything to go? Because I, I have another point I want to bring up. Uh, so when the environmental police go down there, do they let the town know that he's all in compliance and everything is good? The, no, they're doing their job. So they just, they don't, so does he have to be inspected by anybody other than the environmental police? Nope, no. Is there a way for us to uh, ever gain access to how those visits go? or speak with anybody in the environmental place and you know just I could make often, I, guess. Right. I, I, I could only make a suggestion mm -hmm. that you could contact them and ask on top of that what you could also do is uh, reach out to your local representative and ask that he on your behalf work with the environmental police to understand the what's going on so I would I would offer that as a suggestion Marlene I just wanted to, to ask, he has a multi-use permit for, the, for that piece of property? The last I knew Marlene, and this was in a conversation, is that his attorney has said that he is per properly permitted. So we only know through his attorney, we don't know. Yeah, I, I have not followed has up. Has anybody seen the permit? No. Well, the town would issue the permit, right? The multi-use permit, if it were. He's, if it were a special permit, but he doesn't have a special permit, no. That that, that would be on. Well, I could go check online to see if it's there, but I doubt it. I, Gary's next. I'll come back. Well, the, uh, the the permit is news to us because for the most part we haven't ever heard that he's been permitted to do anything. Yeah, and, and, he, and, he, and he seems to be. He, he was he was quite adamant with but me. The impression they can just do anything he damn well right. pleases. So uh, I, ha I I had you know it'd be interesting for the town to find out what's like when I I'll, I'll follow where in fact this permit is. Uh, and uh, if it if it, if he is permitted, you would think that uh, there would be some restrictions on it, you know. And uh, obviously there isn't any, you know. And uh, and that's what the lawyer is trying to clarify is just what. Uh, prescription uh, yeah. uh, restrictions, you know, I'll are involved with this ruling that the judge made that she was so out of line to it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll ask for a copy of the permit. Yeah. But, but again, it, we, it, you know, years ago when they had the races, the selectman licensed the uh, uh, issue a permit to have a race. Now this guy is just doing anything he wants to do with no permits, no this, no yep. that. No uh, guidelines set down or anything. Yep. So uh, I think this lawyer is filling somebody full of a bunch of black. Well, I will request for a copy of what he believes to be the permit that he has. Uh, and I, again, I don't mean to be redundant, but uh, is, so he has the ability to charge people to use the track, okay? And the, the extent of the increase. Um, uh, so there's multiple multiple injuries I understand from the track, ranging from minor to death. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. There has been a death. I guess more, one of my other questions is if they weren't, if, if we found that he wasn't following the regulations, uh, would the town be under any liability at all? That's a good question. I'm sorry. I think that's a good question. That could be a question you should I'll ask. Could be a liability for the yeah. Um, just an objective aside, he suggested speaking to somebody at the state level, if you didn't catch it earlier, Senator Gobi's aide is sitting right there tomorrow from 2 to 3. 2 to 3. Two to three. Two to three. I would very receptive. So even if all of you can't make it, if you get together now, and if one of you can't, please ask that title this question. Please ask that title this question. Please have the Colonel of the EPO call this person something. But um, I was very receptive, and Ann has always been very receptive to us. 
just right. I think we need to be moving. Can I just uh, talk on the safety oh. issue? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I don't begrudge anybody, you know, having you know safety and having the ambulance down there. But um, the way I feel, if they're down there taking, if you're down there taking care of, you know, somebody at the racetrack, and say that there's not somebody from um, if they're out of state, I think it, it's spoiling. I mean, we and then Brookfield resident needs the ambulance, and we have to have somebody from out of town come in. When I can talk from personal experience, we have two of the best here in the town of Brookfield. And it's a shame that they're off on this call, you know, for somebody who doesn't even live here in the town, and we have to wait around for another community to get their ambulance people. That's always a tough sell on that, because then it goes into, well, you know, boat parades, and poker runs, and anything else that's, you know, uh, there may have been other times we had mutual aid in, but there's no point of one time that I'm aware of that it was. And, I think without accepting all those calls are on Sundays. So we have a little bit of an advantage in staffing by mutual partners is a little bit better on weekends from a call perspective. But I put a little research in other um, organizations like this, they have a, they, they hire an ambulance service to be down there for the for the day when they are doing these races. Shouldn't they well, that's, be doing that? that's what we've always been under the impression was because it was only being recognized as a practice facility. Mm -hmm. We were always led to believe, well, it doesn't fall under the same guidelines of national professional organizations that would govern these things. It was just being used as practice. And that's if, if it was that he had to hire it out, we're not in a position to hire out ourselves because with one truck, one crew per shift, you know, he would have to outsource that to a private yeah. organization. Yeah. There's a couple in the area where I was sitting, but we're not in a position. Oh, I understand that. I know yeah. different people have, have private organizations. Linda, I'll take away two actions with respect to the permitting and the liability, and I think we need to be moving on. Okay, all right. Karen, if you could send me a but copy I'd just of like the to thank everyone that came team. up and spoke tonight. I mean, I appreciate that yeah. very much. We don't have it yet. No, the one from okay. the last one. Oh. I, the last one. Yeah. Okay. All right, now we're going to move on to the um, zoning enforcement officer, uh, his discussion and further action on um, 6 Maple Street. We got this from um, zoning enforcement officer Nicholas Tomo, and he says, be advised as July 25th, 2017, non-compliance fines for 6 Maple Street, Brookfield, Mass. have accrued in the amount of $600 and also non-compliance fines for 26 Allen Road, Brookfield, have also reached 600. Both properties are owned by Mr. Holcraft, and the total of these, this is $1,200. And he would like the Board of Selectmen to instruct him um, what he would like us to do with this Mr. consent. Mr. Snyder has recused himself yeah. for the purpose of mm -hmm. this discussion because I'm one of the plaintiffs. And so just to bring the Board up to speed, there was, in fact, a meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals last Wednesday. Uh, through a discussion, there was a review of uh, complaints uh, on an appeal, my appeal. Uh, and with that, uh, the, the uh, decision was moved to continue that discussion until August 1st at 6 p.m. The purpose of that uh, decision to continue was related to whether or not there are statutes of limitations on special permits. And so we will wait at, at that time. Uh, what I'm not speaking to are the uh, original cease and desist orders by the zoning enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. That's a decision that you might want to make uh, this evening. That's your choice. Uh, but at, at this point, uh, what I'm suggesting is that on uh, August 1st, there will be a determination whether or not a special permit that was issued to Mr. Holcraft in 2003, and I'll read item 13. This special permit is issued for a period of two years, so subject to renewal for another two-year period. Upon the uh, applicant's compliance with all conditions of this permit on the operation of the business during the permit period, and it's my contention that 
he has not operated to the original special permit, but special permit has, ex has expired, and therefore he does not have a right to operate the business at 6 South Maple. And again, it would be my suggestion that we wait until that uh, determination as to what actions we might want to take by the zoning enforcement officer. Madam Chair? Well, from what I had talked to the zoning enforcement officer today, and he would like us to instruct him, he'd like to follow through, and he'd like to bring court action on this. Wow. Okay, so my... Madam Chair, may I approach when I get a chance? Well, in a minute, and in a minute, you'll have your chance. Well, I'm my, waiting to hear Ms. Coughlin. My understanding, Madam Chair, is that we, in essence, have have three options. Mm -hmm. We can instruct them to just continue on the course of leaving the the first notice in place. Mm -hmm. We can instruct him to, which would mean that we'd continue to accumulate the daily fines at the okay. level of the first offense. Mm -hmm. um, we could instruct him to issue a second citation for cease and desist. Uh, which would then go to the second offense level of of civil mm -hmm. uh, civil fines, uh, or we could instruct him to go to the uh, uh, county court and go ahead and, and file this as a as an action with the state. Um, he he would like to I guess go to the you know the regular the court and file this, and I don't know if we want to wait until our, something comes up with the hearing on the first. Or if we want to start an action on this now. It's my recommendation to wait. To wait. Do you feel that way? I don't have a problem with at least issuing a second cease and desist order mm -hmm. considering the condition of that property. Because I will tell you, I took some photos of that property over the weekend, and it was in uh, absolutely horrendous mm -hmm. condition. Or at least one of them, the one that's that's here on Route yeah. Nine. Uh, in, in absolutely a condition that is non-compliant with the conditions of that special mm -hmm. permit. So I, I think at, at a minimum, despite the fact that the Zoning Board of Appeals is going to be hearing yeah. it again, I think mm -hmm. we need to be serious about uh, it, it's something we, that we haven't done a great job of as a town and we need to start getting better at enforcement when there's guidelines for people. So I understand I, that, yeah. Um, my recommendation, I'd like to make a motion that we at least at least instruct him to um, issue a, a, a second, second offense yeah, citation for both properties. Mm -hmm. um, and, pen, and then have that in place uh, pending some input from the Zoning Board of Appeals. That, that's what I, my recommendation, or that's what my motion okay. would be. All right. Well, we'll have some more discussion. Mr. Hol I'll, I'll take your, Mr. Holcraft? Yeah, I'm gonna come up. And by the way, dear, you left the meeting so quickly the other night. Uh, you know where the wastebasket is in this room. Yeah, so I put it in it. Um, first of all, my property, Route 9, will operate under a tax sale law right now. The shed has been shut down, so you can't find me for doing anything on that property. I'm operating under this tax sale law, okay? Tag Number sale? Two, if it's a tag sale law, are you, are you charging for these things? That's correct, I am. Sign's been there for years. Number two, you two were at a meeting at the ZBA board and you opened your violation of the open meeting law because you both were under corrosion of trying to get me and it's on a personal attack. So if you do file tonight, I will file. Do you understand? You two were both, you did not post a meeting with the both of you were going to be discussing town business. And you were discussing uh, town business. No, it's an open no, meeting. No, 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 I can no. sit in the audience of any open meeting. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. But you, it, that's okay. You say what you want. But from my no. understanding, Mr. Snyder was up here as a citizen and he was here with his own counsel. So it's that's not true. as though he was up Doesn't here matter. representing the board of selectmen. So as long as you don't, if you do something tonight, then I'll get you on corrosion. Okay? Go for it. Oh, I will. I absolutely will. No, I'm just giving you. I'm just giving. I'm just telling you. I'm oh, just telling you. We stand. Who is your lawyer? I don't have to discuss that at this time. You'll find out. You'll find out on the first. Okay. Just like I told your attorney, it's only his business. Okay. Okay. All right. So anyway, that's what I wanted to say. So so you can find me all you want, but I'm not operating under that whatever. And then we'll decide. We'll decide if we have a permit or not. If you if you do our operating as say a tag sale business that's correct and you're collecting money is there somebody up there collecting the money and they're after it's on an honest system it's done all the time 
I've never seen that. I've never. I've seen people. And actually, there's there's very there's very specific guidelines. In fact, I, I'm glad that you said there that. There is no specific there is guidelines very specific on tax guidelines. sale laws. There's no bylaw in this town on tax sale. So don't bring your propaganda to the table again, Beth. I said I need to research it. There there's may nothing be some, to research. There's nothing in Mass General Law. Well, I know We're that. We're talking about the town of Brookfield. Madam Chair, do you want me to do at least some? I don't want to involve the, it, the, the town council because I don't think it's it's worth spending money on their time, but do you mind if I do a little research regarding tax, sale. tax sales? Well, and I can give you a little experience myself. Uh, a year after I um, retired, I, I went up to the town of Palmer and I trained a new town clerk up there, and the town of Palmer has a tax sale law. And before you can... Um, before you can have one, you have to come in and you have to say that you're having a tag sale and you have to tell the date and the hours that you're doing it and the town keeps a copy and there are rules and regulations that go along with that. Yeah, what's I could do with Brookfield there, Mr. Well, we Madam could, Chairman? Well, we could probably do the same thing here in Brookfield. Oh, yeah, more regulations, more laws, well, putting the thumb down on the people again, yeah. All for one but person, do you have? I I've never seen a sign up there that says you're running a tag sale. Well, maybe you should clean your glasses. Just, it just off says no dumping. Clean my glasses clean off. Your glasses well, off. that's kind of insulting, Mr. Holcraft. No, it's not. I'm just saying, go up there and take a peek. Is this sign new? No, it's bad. But I keep new ones up there all the time. Oh, right. I usually had it on the back of the fence, now I get it on the front. All right. So okay. so I think okay. so, okay. Madam Chairman, under advice of my counsel. Mm -hmm. Under Chapter 268A, Paragraph 23BC, I'm disclosing that I am uh, a complaining party on another action. And we've just talked about that. Mm -hmm. In the case of the complaint filed by a neighbor during the Wednesday um, meeting, uh, I am acting uh, in this case as a, board, a member of the Board of Selectmen. I received a, com uh, a verbal complaint related to 90 Lake Road where it appears from an aerial photo that Mr. Holcraft is either storing trash or junk at 90 Lake Road. I asked Mr. Holcraft whether or not he will vo voluntarily submit to an inspection of that property by representatives of the town. Send me a letter. Absolutely. I get bylaws that, that govern what I've been doing. Okay. Just uh, for the note, we will in fact send you, send you that. Uh, it, let it be known that Mr. Holcraft is not a licensed hauler, a trash hauler in the town, or a junk dealer in the town of Brookfield. Let it also be known that the town, uh, under the zoning bylaws, page 10, section 4, paragraph B, prohibited uses in all districts, item 5, and I quote, all open air storage of junk or salvage materials are express expressly uh, prohibited in all zoning areas. We give a second. There's two sides to that. I want to make sure you have a copy. I already got one. Right. Read both sides. Did you didn't read the other side of the bylaw. There's two sides to that bylaw. Okay, can you share the other side of the bylaw? You, you, no, you share it. You, well, you, I don't have it with me. You're the one that's bringing it up. You share it. I, I, I shared what I'm going to share. I'll have to show you the other part later. Okay, look yeah. forward to it. We'll probably see you at Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday, or next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. actually, remember that August no, 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 1st no, is a probably. Tuesday. You will see me again. Yeah, look forward to it. Oh, I'm looking forward to it, too. So, um, I would like to, my Mr. Snyder can't get involved with this, but I would like to entertain a motion that we have the Zoning Enforcement Officer issue a second season disorder on 6 South Maple and 26 Allen Road. Madam, you have that motion. And I will second that motion. And there's any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Jim? Yes. You're not going to include uh, Lake Road or 28 Allen Road as well? I thought you had 90 Lake Road in there. Oh, 90. No, I don't have that. No, one that we were talking about with the fines is the, is the 6 Allen, I mean the 6 South Maple and the 26 Allen Road. That's the ones that already had that he had filed a cease and desist order on those. I'll, I'll set, file a separate motion that, that we have the that's zoning That's a separate enforcement motion for that one. Officer, take a look into the complaint yeah. that we received tonight. Yeah. But these were, we were talking about the uh, first two. They had the yeah, fines I thought, on I them. thought the first one also included 26 and 28 Allen Road. No, it doesn't have. It's only 6 six Maple, 6 South Maple, and 26 Allen Road. It does not have 28. If you get a complaint about either of the other ones? Those would have to be separate because these are these were filed first. Yeah. There were cease and, cease and disorder. They were filed first. So these are the ones that we want a second one 
I think you have no problem getting a complaint on either of the other two locations. But we would need to have a, co a written complaint on that. Okay. Okay. So, but we will. We'll, we're going to order him to do that. The second Correct. one on that. Okay. So, do we want to also make a um, a motion that we will have uh, a cease and disorder on um, not what is it ninety Lake 90 Road? Ninety Lake Road. I think you need an inspection first. We need an inspection. Okay, so we'll have the zoning enforcement officer go down there, and we'll do an inspection. So, Karen, uh, do you want to have uh, Nick go down and inspect Ninety Lake Road? <coughs> Are you going to put that in a motion? Uh, yes. I'll make a motion to have yeah. uh, the zoning enforcement officer uh, at, at least contact the property owner yeah. and attempt an inspection of 90 Lake Road. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, do we have any more discussion on this? Nope. Okay, Thanks. we'll move on. Okay, our next one here is um, on the uh, email changeover and update and discussion on that. Uh, we've been, uh, we got, we uh, talked to Tom George and he said that he was waiting, this came in today. Right, right Karen? Yeah. And he's waiting from, from Canon, what is? That's the, um the company with the email. Okay, he's waiting from the from uh, he's waiting for a reply from Canon on a few um, things that he has to still do on it, and he says he wants to make sure everyone is set up before he throws the switch. And he also told Beth that she can contact me and be Beth provided with that info. Yep. Okay. Are you satisfied? Did you get to talk to him? I did not get a chance to talk to him yet. I, I've been a little schedule constrained. I'm going to try to break loose some time. Right now, I don't think we have to worry about this. Ready He's policy. really not right. It, exactly. Does. And the good news is he did say that if we wanted to keep outlook, that we could because that's definitely well, what a lot of people. Yeah. And, and that that was that was my biggest concern. And my research yeah. was saying that we ought to be able to keep it. It just hadn't been made clear to people, and that's why I was saying that really what I'm most concerned about is not that I want to gum up the works in doing this yeah. transition. It's just that I want to make sure we do some education up front with users before we flip the switch. That's my biggest concern because I've been through these type of transitions before but, in organizations and it can be very disruptive if you don't take a little time to, and to get with the operators. The thing is, like, I know that you wanted to have a couple different sessions, but he, he holds a full-time job and a lot of things that he's done for us, he hasn't even charged us for this. So. I, I understand that. I didn't know if maybe the company that's doing the transit, it wasn't so much I was wondering if Tom could do it, I was wondering if yeah. if, if we, you know, even if we incurred a, a slight fee to do it, is is to bring in somebody from the company to do that training for him, was was more what I was Terrible. thinking. I think, I think, and I think that's why he said he was working with people. Yeah, he's working with It has to do with the, okay. with the outlook. I mean, if it's outlook, Everything's fine in order to. Right, exactly. But is it necessary? Because I don't know if people. People that are concerned, from what I understand, are sticking with Outlook. And, the well, other and, and so know, long as they the can stick with Outlook, yeah. it's not, it should, it, 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 it should be okay. seamless for them. So then it's yeah. not an issue. That, so no. my biggest concern was, can people keep Outlook? If they can keep Outlook, great. If they can't keep Outlook, we need right. to figure out that's what true. needs to happen to make sure that the, the users are, are comfortable with the it. The things we can keep, it, and I think that's what he's waiting for, is how to do it. For how to do end. it. Yeah, because yeah. that that might that may yeah. that may wind up increasing our implementation cost a slight amount because I think they may have to do some some additional work to do that. So we, we need to understand that better. Okay. okay. Do we have anything more on that? Nope. I think okay. Larry's the next thing. Okay. We'll move on now to um, IT discussion. There's been a lot going on with Thank this you. discussion. And I think we had we had for given a for a long time now, and the, we use Tantasco right now. And I know a lot of the uh, people up here in the town hall are not too happy with Tantasco. And um, I know two different departments don't even three departments don't even use him, use them. So we had put uh, Carrie and the like, town accountant Carrie Polakowski in charge of getting some uh, quotes from two different companies, and she got uh, two quotes from. It's called Tech Samurai. Samurai. Yeah. Samurai. And how do you say Larry? Samurai. Exe Exebia. Exebia. Like and that. that's Larry Van Cott, who used to do our work for oh, yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. And so they both gave us a quote. Um, Samurai, Tech Samurai, is 18000 
and additional work would be uh, $75 to $100 per hour if we needed him. And Larry's quote is six, $16,560, and additional work would only be $65 per hour. And uh, she's been going after these quotes for about six months now, and all she's got is two quotes. Really? That's she all she's got? She told me Linda that. Yeah. She said they were basically, she couldn't give a recommendation because she thought they were both yeah. comparable and, in competency yeah. and in price and yeah. everything. She just And we've had, we have used, before we got involved with Tantasco, we have used um, Larry Vancott, who has Exevia, I think you call it. And Larry's very good, and we're very, we have a lot of confidence in Larry. We need him. He's right here within, within, say, 15, 20 minutes to help us with our needs. And I think the water department uses him, and the highway does right now. And they still want to be able to use him. They don't care to have 10 task at all. Yeah, and, and we, I think this is an easy uh, decision yeah. in reviewing the different proposals with Kerry. Yeah. It suggests that Larry Van Cott has the yeah. better proposal of yes. the two, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's an easy to do to get all the departments using the same person. So I'd, I'd make a recommendation that we move forward with Larry Van Cott's proposal. Yes. Um, I will second that motion. Do we have any discussion on? I mean, my only concern is that I think one of the things we probably need to do is ensure that we clearly communicate what kind of level of service that that we're expecting because one of the challenges that we experienced it a, a number a couple of years back when Larry was our primary IT person <laughs> was there was really no proactive planning or communication around what we would need to do to deal with at the time I think uh, Microsoft was going to fail to support Storage I think head. XP mm -hmm. yep. uh, we also for years were non-compliant with state law under his guidelines with regards to our email storage and our backups. Um, I think if we're going to be paying him $16,000 a year as a set fee, because I think before that when he was doing that work, he was only getting paid like the $65 an hour. Okay, yep. So basically he was doing whatever, and, and, and so I don't want to speak ill of him because we weren't paying him to do a real job of managing our IT mm -hmm. at the time. Okay, right. so. I get that. If if you're getting paid sixty five dollars an hour and everybody is like trying to squeeze you for your fifteen minute increments, that we're yeah. But, but you under, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. But but I think the expectation though is if we enter this contract, that we and I don't know if it's in the proposal I think it is. that on a regular basis yeah. that he do a review of the condition of our IT of of the go forward needs that he meet with the CIPC and communicate you know, as part of that base, $16,500, that, that we get at least an annual update of what the plan is to keep us current and compliant. Because those are the two things that well, we really have to be aware of. Okay, well, I talked to the um, accountant today about a lot of this. And she says, um, we need a, a total reconstruction of all the services here. She says we don't have to replace any of the equipment because the equipment is here already. Yep. And she says we have to do a reconstruction of the platform. Yep. Now I'm not into all the IT. Yep. Yeah. And she, then she, she and I can geek and out for a little while about and that. And then she said fine. also, she said the network was not set up properly here because no, nobody can network with anybody here. Right, but I, so the, the challenge is is that Tantasqua did some of that, but what little network they have is from after they took over it and, and Larry had not at the time, because he didn't have that guidance from the selectmen, set up anything but a little bit of peer-to-peer -peer networking here or there. Well, Larry so, never was. He wouldn't, he wouldn't no. once no. Tantasqua, once those computers yeah. in Tantasqua, he didn't no. really do anything. He didn't do anything. What he really used him for right. was for if we had an issue, we had to fix it. But if, look, in, look in the... Um, in the contract, because I know Carrie's very computer savvy. Yeah, she is. She is. Sure Can, that is mind? in there because she would not have said she would not have recommended both of them if it was. Because she has worked with on. this one before. She right. Said. Yeah, she had experience with both. Both. Oh, yeah. she has worked with, with both. both companies. Yes, yeah. she has. Okay. And it really was of the two. This was Larry was the more yeah, cost Larry, effective. Yeah. Okay. So that's the decision or recommendation I'm making. I'll make that recommendation. Yeah, we'll get a motion. Yeah, it's just let Beth. We both of us are recommending Larry. Yeah. 
Oh, we had a motion for that. Okay, so the things that he's listing. Okay, so they're going with Barracuda. Um, just as an FYI, we won't need Barracuda backup using the um, the uh, email server service that we're going to. Right, that we didn't we didn't tell yeah. them. We okay. had to talk to Larry on the other one. Okay. And that's what All right. We have, so. Um, so. Yeah, but that's back to a strategic right. discussion with both yeah. of them. And why it's good to move forward with Larry now is that that can that conversation can happen. Right. Okay. I, I'm I'm comfortable at this point. Oh, okay. you have a? Do you already have the motion? Yeah, we have a motion. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we had our discussion. Um, all in favor of ha hiring Larry, Larry Van Cott for our IT server for our IT company. Aye. 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 Uh, Linda second. I, I made second. the motion. Yeah, Linda I seconded. seconded. Okay. So you can let Larry know. Right. And then we'll let Tan, have to let Tan Haskell know that we're going to no longer need those services. Okay. All right. Now, under other here. This is um, this was brought to us. It's on um, to do some public hearings on um, for. Uh, they want, um, well, I guess I had talked to the zone, to um, the building inspector and Mike Siri, I think, has he talked to you also about going along with um, Mass General, Mass General Law, Law 139. Yes. Mass General where the, Law. Yeah, where yep. the selectmen would hold a hearing to determine whether, you know, the different properties are a nuisance yep. in the neighborhood. I'll chair the meeting if you need me yeah. to. Okay. And um, we'd like to have, um, have them done all in September. Um, on 9-5 and they, it would be at 7 p.m. Uh, 30 Campbell Street. So where are we going? What, what, what's the timing? Okay, that would be September 5th. Yeah. Uh, 17 at 7 p.m. That would be 30 Campbell Street and then also the same day at 7-15 it would be 16 North Brookfield Road and that's another one we put on and 9-5 uh, also at 7:30 p.m. we would have 4 South Maple Street, and uh, I guess Mr. Is Herb gone? I guess yes. Herb said that he would take care of uh, removing these properties yep. for us, and so we have the three of these to sign. So I would like to entertain a motion for the yep. chair to sign these uh, three uh, public hearing notices. You have my motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I gave you the state grant, but I'd like to hang tight it under other. The announcement is okay. I actually have the original that I gave Linda earlier. It's in correspondence. It's in correspondence. Well, we've got other. Do we have the correspondence? Uh, it was there earlier. It was. The red phone? Original, right? if not, I, my it left I know you gave it to me, Clarence, when we came in. Yeah, you had it out here. Right there. It here it is. Okay, right here, right here. Okay. All righty. Okay, and uh, under other? Oh, right yeah. yeah. I have it right here. Yeah, yeah, she has the original. I have the original. I was going to get out and read. Okay. Okay, it was sent to Mr. Comfort, but he's not here yet. <laughs> That's why it was hand delivered. Yes, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, July 20th, 2017. And uh, this came from uh, Governor Charles Baker and Lieutenant Governor Carol, Karen Polito. That letter was from handed from uh, Governor Baker to Representative Berthium oh. for our benefit. Okay, all right. 
It says, congratulations, I am pleased to notify you that the Town of Brookfield has received an FY 2017 Massachusetts Community Block Grant Award of $363,699, and I want to thank you for your, co your commitment to the community development efforts <coughs> in the Town of Brookfield. Through this funding and your continued support, we hope to assist you in strengthening your community and enhancing the quality of your life of your residents. You will be receiving further instructions from the Department of Housing and Community Development on the next steps. Please feel free to contact Mark Southard at um, state.ma.us uh, if you have any questions. And that was from the, the governor and the lieutenant governor. <coughs> yeah, and therefore, two <coughs> the two projects are for the infrastructure and senior center and planning projects and um, ADA environmental remediation. For the design. Great for the design for the town the hall. Designs. The yep. town hall. That's great. That's very nice. That's uh, what. Madam, Madam Chairperson, could you acknowledge the people in town who were instrumental in pushing that grant forward? A significant amount of money and some of the citizens oh. of the town. Yeah. I know, I know. It was um, Bruce Clark was involved with it. And Cindy, Cindy Thompson, Thompson and Mary Lou Knight and Don. Was, no, Don wasn't, no. It was... Um, Who were we missing? Beth Earl? Roberts. Yeah. Beth Roberts. Yep. So I'd like to acknowledge them and thank them for yeah. all the hard work they've done. That's our, that's our grand advisory board, right? The CBDG mm -hmm. uh, yes. advisory board. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they quietly do some really excellent work for yes. the town. Yep. Yeah, it's done. So we, we appreciate all the work that they do for these grants, and, and this is a nice grant to get. Huge. It is. Okay, do we have anything else that we'd like to bring up this evening? With the hour, what I would only have is a suggestion that came about from last Wednesday's meeting that uh, we may wish to consider is that by sitting at this end of the room we have people coming and going from the door as we noted yeah. tonight that had to come in and sign in and the like and the suggestion that was made was to in fact turn the meeting around where we would in fact sit at the other end of the uh, of this room and face this way such that the people can enter from the back and and not d disrupt the meeting so i'm not asking for a decision tonight but it was an idea that was shared with me and i wanted to share it with the board okay that is I think at one time we've even had them sitting on this side of the room. We've okay. had them in all different areas. I know. I just there was a suggestion yeah, made. There would be. A, I mean, I don't. It. I don't have any pro. It's the lighting that is good down there. It is, it, I mean, it's just turning on one more bank yeah. of lights. I don't have any problem with that at all. If this is what we want to do, we can try it and have Paul set yeah. it up the next time. We could yeah. do. A, we could do a test run next meeting. Yeah. Next yeah. meeting, Marlene. I was just going to say that I think the reason it would put there is because of that picture. I'm oh. sure. Yeah. Oh. It's a great backdrop. Mm. Yeah. But it, it is, it does make a lot of, I agree, it does make a lot of interference in people That's what people were complaining about. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Mr. Taft? May I ask, uh, does anybody know what the historic value uh, is or the history of the uh, the counter that was the town clerk's there. counter that was that was the town clerk's counter and that has been here in the building since we they built it back in 1904 and it's a piece of history here with the town and mrs plum had discussed it with me earlier and she agrees with me and she took a poll of everybody up here in the town hall and we would like to see that stay here in town hall we don't want to see it you know given away or sold to anybody and it's in to, and if we could use the upstairs, you know, it could be moved upstairs because it has been moved in here and it's two pieces that move it. And right now, I don't know if any, they were using it for, for storage, a lot of the, a few of the different departments. And what a nice, we thought a, a good thing would to be if we were able to use the upstairs again. Uh, it could go off in a corner and the board of registrars could use that as a check-in desk, you know, for voting. If we're, you know, if we get, a handicapped chair or something to go upstairs but we we do we'd like to keep it we don't want it to go because somebody had offered to buy it a few years ago and we refused them so we've lost too many pieces here in the town hall and i think that's a piece of history that we want to stay here and maybe we should share it with bill and the team i and, talked to bill about bill met me tonight coming excellent in, and i talked to bill about it already excellent 
So motion to well. Mo motion to, to adjourn. To adjourn at uh, eight oh six. Yep. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is slow.